Now here's a classic experiment you may have performed as a kid. You take a bucket, you fill it with water, and you swing it around over your head like so. And it, the water stays in there miraculously, as if some sort of otherworldly force was holding it in. Now in order to make this thing work, you need to be swinging the bucket fast enough. If you do not swing the bucket fast enough, you end up wearing the water. And that's not quite as fun. So let's analyze this system a bit. So here's my bucket in pink. And instead of putting water in my bucket, I'm going to make, an, make it an ice cube instead. Uh, solids are easier to analyze than liquids. And we'll say as I'm swinging this bucket around, it's going around a circle of radius, I'll call it R. And when the bucket's at the very top up here, let's suppose that it has a velocity I'll call, or speed I'll call V. So let's start this analysis with the free body diagram. And what are the forces acting on the body? Well, I obviously have weight pulling down, so let me put that in there. So that's a minus mg in the j hat direction. And what else? I also have the, the bucket, the bottom of the bucket, can only push on the block. It can't pull on the block. So it has to be also pushing down. So I'll say that's the normal force in the minus j hat direction. And even though my picture doesn't quite show, let's suppose this ice block is not touching the side walls of the bucket. So there's no force from the bucket uh, pushing this thing left or right at the moment. That ice block is just free to slide back and forth if it wants to. Now let me ask you a question. What other force is acting on this body? Do I have any missing forces here? The answer is that's it. There's no other forces acting on my block. We have the weight pulling down on it. Weight is acting at a distance, right? That's the only force that acts at a distance. It's the earth pulling down the block. All other forces have to be things in contact with the block, actually touching the block. And the only thing touching the block is the bucket. And the bucket, the bucket is providing a normal force downward. It has to be downward because, again, the bucket can only push. It cannot pull on the block. It's not stuck there. There's no glue. Uh, sticking to the bucket. So the bucket can only push its normal force downward. And that's it. I know a lot of you are feeling uneasy about this. Some of you might think that there needs to be a centrifugal force pushing on the block upward against the bucket, but no. What is the centrifugal force? Is there anything actually pushing on it? Absolutely not. You might say, well, it's an acceleration force pulling on it. Well, accelerations do not go on the free body diagram. Only forces go on the free body diagram. At the accelerations go on the other side of the equation. F equals ma. It goes on the f it goes on the ma side of the equation. So this is all I have for forces. Now I'm going to draw my mass acceleration diagram where I have to list all the accelerations on here. So um, let's assume that when it's at the top the speed is not changing. And so all I have is a a block moving around a circular arc at the top here and the speed's not changing. But the velocity is changing, right? Because the velocity vector is changing its direction as it goes around the circular arc. So I get the centripetal acceleration acting towards the center of the circle. And the center of the circle, in this case, is downward when the, when the block is at the very top. So let me put that on there. And this is going to be mass times acceleration. The acceler centripetal acceleration is a speed squared divided by the radius of curvature. So speed squared divided by r. And this is an acceleration in the minus j hat direction. It's acceleration towards the center of the circle, which in this case is downward. And that is it for my mass acceleration diagram. So the next thing I'm going to do is start moving over to Newton's second law. And Newton told us that sum of all the forces equals mass times acceleration. So let's dive into it. Uh, looks like everything we have here is in the j hat direction. So I'm going to peel off the j hat direction of this vector equation. And what I get is a minus normal force minus the weight is equal to minus mass times speed squared divided by a radius. And if I look at this equation, I notice things that are given. I'm given uh, the mass of the block. I'm given gravitational acceleration is always given. I'm given the speed. I'm given the radius. Looks like almost everything in this equation is given except for the n. So just for the heck of it, why don't I, why don't I go ahead and solve for that n? find that the n is mass times speed squared over r minus the weight. So there's the normal force in case you wanted to know it. In fact, I do want to know it because it actually tells us a whole lot. Let me just write it a little bit differently though. Both terms have a mass in there. So let me, let me pull that piece out. And I get speed squared divided by a radius 
minus g, right? All multiplied by m. And this is interesting for the following reason. Notice that if, if v squared over radius, speed squared divided by radius is greater than, than g, that tells us that the normal force is going to be positive, right? Otherwise, otherwise, I guess if it's strictly less than zero, then normal force is going to be negative. And that's not good, I don't think, right? What does it mean to have a negative normal force? That would mean the normal force would actually be upward instead of downward. That means I'd actually have some sort of stickum between the, between the ice cube and the bucket in order to keep this thing going around in a circle. But we can't have that. Not good. So this actually tells us how fast we need to, to move the bucket in order to keep the, keep the ice cube in the bucket. I need to move the bucket at a rate such that v squared divided by r is bigger than g. In that case, I get the normal force down, and I get this thing going around in a circle like we saw in the first video. And I can try to put it another way. In order for this ice cube to stay in a bucket, it must be moving around the circle at a fast enough rate so that its acceleration downward is bigger than the acceleration due to gravity, right? Here's the centripetal acceleration downward. Here's the acceleration due to gravity. So if, the, if it's accelerating downward faster than it would, or at a greater rate than if it were just falling, then I actually need the normal force here to pull it down. That's what's going on. Under this condition, the water stays in the bucket. It does not slosh out. And I think we're finished analyzing the problem. After many years of teaching this course, however, I can sort of anticipate a question that many of you might have. That is, where is that centrifugal force? Where was it? It didn't appear in, in the problem anywhere. And the answer is quite simple. The answer is there's no such thing as a centrifugal force. So <laughs> it's not even a good question. And you might be saying, what? You've been hearing about centrifugal force since you were who knows what age. But no, no such thing. So never include a centrifugal force in your analysis in this course. It doesn't exist. It's fictitious. It's mythical. It's, it's non-existent. But you might say, be saying, well, then why, why have I heard about it so often? Well, let's discuss what people think that the centrifugal force, the so-called centrifugal force, is. When I was a little kid, I used to love riding my dad's Buick. It had this big bench, essentially, in the back seat. It was made out of vinyl, so when I was wearing soft pants like sweatpants or something like that, it'd be really slippery. And back then, no one would wear, no one would wear seat belts. So when my dad would drive his car around a curve at a reasonable speed, it was a lot of fun because I would just slide across that back seat of the the back seat of the Buick and crash into the wall on the other side of the car. And he'd turn the other way and I'd slide right back and it's fun. But to me, sitting in that car, as my dad went around the corner, it felt as if there was a force pushing me to one side or the other. And that's the centrifugal force. But wait, I told you there is no centrifugal force, right? Really, there is no force there pushing me to one side. What's happening is, before we enter the turn, I have mass. I have velocity, and if there's no forces on me, the velocity just wants to keep on going straight. So as I enter the turn, my body just keeps on wanting to go straight. So in order for me, as a person in the back seat, to make the turn with the car, there needs to be a force pulling me inward in order to have a centripetal acceleration inward. But the problem is that back seat was so slippery. There was hardly enough friction to accelerate me inward. So what happened is I just kept on, or at least my body wanted to keep on going along that straight line. And I would slide across that bench until I hit the, the left side of the car, the little wall there or the door there. Then the door would push me in and then I would continue uh, moving with the car. And as soon as I made the left turn, I'd slide all the way across the bench to the right. But there is no centrifugal force here, right? It's just, Inertia. Inertia wants to keep the body going straight. If centrifugal force is just what it feels like is what's going on when you're, when you're sliding across the bench. It feels like you're being pushed across the bench. But it's only because you're inside a car that has a centripetal acceleration to it. And similarly, for our bucket of water problem, there is no centrifugal force. The only forces are weight, the normal force pushing on the bucket, and the centripetal acceleration. When that centripetal acceleration is greater than the acceleration due to gravity, 
greater than the acceleration than would be present if the weight were just falling all by itself, then I need that normal force to keep the water or keep the ice going around this circular path. And that's all there is to this problem.